A fresh read from the trips this morning, Taiwan, Taiwan Semi reporting a 45% jump in July revenue compared to last year. That was thanks to strong demand for the company's AI chips. Shares are, well, they're bouncing around along the flat line here, but a big outperformer on the year. Okay, one of their key customers, of course, is NVIDIA, and that stock has been whipsawed this week. It's coming off what is its best day this month, but the company has shed about a trillion dollars in market cap since mid-June when it was at its highs. Let's get more on that name and a bunch of other semis. Joining us now is Bernstein, Stacy Raskin. Uh, Stacy, always great to have you. You know, let's just start on NVIDIA. Some of the news this week on the delays potentially as a yeah. result of sort of design issues around Blackwell. A, uh, you know, well, just give me your take. Is it real and what's it going to mean? Yeah, it, it seems like it's real enough. There's enough smoke there. There's some fire. We, we've had some confirmation from other folks in the supply chain. Supermicro kind of alluded to it. And so it seems real. It, it doesn't seem major, right? Um, it, it seems like a, a relatively minor design issue. It looks like they may have already fixed it. We've got um, uh, maybe a two to three month delay, I think. What that really means is where people were hoping that like real volume shipments would happen in, in calendar Q4, it looks like it may be Q1, so it's a slight push out. You have to remember, this stuff is, is difficult to do, so I mean, like even, even NVIDIA is not necessarily immune to it. In the meantime, though, like we've had uh, hyperscale uh, CapEx guides that are all still going up. Um, all of those would have incorporated whatever is going on. Like they didn't just find out about this, you know, because of the, the news stories, they would have incorporated it. And NVIDIA's got strong demand for their existing architecture, which is called Hopper, and it looks like they're, they're likely increasing production of that to try to backfill uh, and smooth things over until we actually get the Blackwell um, uh, launching uh, in, in more volume, maybe a quarter later. But structurally, I don't think it's, it's, it's that big of an issue. Now, now sentiment-wise, clearly it's, it's, it's impacted the stock. I think the stock's been a few things. One was there's just been a, a general reduction of sentiment on the AI space in general. People are just starting to look at lots of dollars they're getting spent. They're wondering about where's the return. So the sentiment wasn't you know, quite as supportive as it had been. And then you have this on top of it, which, which weighs on it. So, I mean, that, that's kind of what's been going on. But structurally, I don't know that anything really has changed within media. Right. We got a little push out. I think it'll yeah. be okay. All right. Well, right. I mean, demand is demand. It's still there as you. Similar to Apple, NVIDIA demonstrates that having strong software skills is just as important as having strong hardware skills for growth. Although NVIDIA is well known for producing AI chips, its main building block is a commercial wall that keeps clients in and rivals out. This barrier is composed as much of silicon as it is software. Similar to Apple's, NVIDIA has built what is referred to as a walled garden in the IT world over the last 20 years. NVIDIA has always concentrated on the programmers who create artificial intelligence systems and other software using its chips, whereas Apple targets its ecosystem of services and software at customers. Because of its walled garden, NVIDIA is unlikely to lose a significant portion of the AI industry in the upcoming years, especially in the face of competition from rival chip manufacturers and even from internet behemoths like Google and Amazon. It also clarifies why competitors of NVIDIA are rushing to create software that can get past the company's defenses and why, in the long run, the competition for market share that NVIDIA currently controls is likely to center on the company's coding skills rather than just the design of its circuits. The QDA software platform is essential to comprehending NVIDIA's walled garden. This platform, which debuted in 2007, provided a solution to a challenge no one had yet encountered running software without graphics. Utilizing NVIDIA's specialist chips, which were made for labor-intensive applications like 3D graphics and video games, for tasks like mining cryptocurrencies and encrypting data. On those chips, referred to as graphics processing units, or GPUs, QDA made it possible to do a wide range of additional computation. AI software is one of the apps that CUDA enabled NVIDIA's chips to run, and its rapid development in recent years has elevated NVIDIA to one of the most valuable firms in the world. Crucially, remember that CUDA was only the start. Year after year, NVIDIA produced specialized code libraries in response to the demands of software developers, which made it feasible for a vast range of activities to be completed on its GPUs at speeds that were not achievable with traditional general-purpose processors like those produced by AMD and Intel. With all these developments under consideration and analyst predictions, we'll talk about target projections and advice in today's video.
so make sure not to miss out. However, before you do, if you'd like to stay up to date on NVIDIA's most recent updates and the most recent news from the stock market, you can subscribe to our channel. We publish daily updates about the biggest shifts in market catalysts, so click the bell icon button to ensure you don't miss the most recent updates. All right, back to today's video. About the stock itself and the multiple and, the, you know, what we've seen in terms of that and whether that makes it even more compelling, I guess, from the perspective of somebody like yourself. Yeah, look, so it, it, NVIDIA has never really been all that expensive. I mean, even, even at its peak, it was maybe uh, 40 times forward earnings. With the, the sell side forward numbers that that's based on are likely still too low. Um, 40 times is about its five-year median or five-year average, so it's not actually that expensive. It's, it's cheaper now. It's probably 30 times now. Um, yeah, at least I think you've de-risked it a little bit, like going into the back half um, on, on the back of this. And if they do announce some kind of a delay, if they verify it on the call, because at this point it won't be like everybody kind of knows about it. So yeah, we can kind of work through this. Um, demand still looks really strong. If you're pushing, you know, the volume into next year, it actually makes next year look better. Um, again, more upside to the numbers, hopefully. Yeah, I, I think the valuation here still looks, still looks quite attractive. Okay. Stacey, I realize you don't actually cover this name, but Applied Materials, we're going to get those results next I, I week. I cover Applied Materials. Oh, you do? Okay. I stand corrected. Okay. What are you watching for there, and how much of an indicator is that to the broader semi-space as we do look to the second half of the year? Yeah, so there's there's a few things. People are clearly watching China semi-cap demand, which has been very strong. Um, now, AMAT is one of the few companies in semi where they've actually already guided their China mix to be declining as we go into the back half, and so I'd like to see if that's happening. Um, but I think um, uh, the, the, the whole like China overbuilt worry is not as big of an issue for AMAT maybe as it is for some of the others. Many of their peers are have you know 50 percent of the revenue coming from China right now. AMAT should be I think they, they suggest it should be going down to the low 30s percentage, which is kind of normal for them by the end of the year. So we'll be watching that. The other thing which, which I think has influenced a lot of the semi caps recently was Intel. So Intel just mm -hmm. you know, nominally cut capex and, and that caused some angst. I will say though, you know, in, Intel took their capex guidance for this year. I, I guess they said from 33 billion to 26. I actually had to take my capex numbers for Intel up, not down. I actually don't know where that 33 billion dollar number came from. I was at 24. I had to take it up to 26. Next year I took it down a little bit. We had been at 24. I think we're at 21 and a half now for Intel. So a minor reduction. But again, the same thing. The semi caps would have known about whatever Intel is doing like before Intel announced it. So I'm not too worried about that. But those are the kind of things that people will be watching for, I think, with AMAT as they report. I think it's on the 15th of, uh, of uh, next week. For many years, NVIDIA has employed more software engineers than hardware engineers, which can be attributed to the company's emphasis on software platforms. Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, recently referred to the company's focus on hardware and software as full stack computing implying that NVIDIA manufactures everything from the processors to the software needed to develop artificial intelligence. Every time a competitor releases AI processors designed to take on NVIDIA's, they are going up against systems that NVIDIA's clientele has been utilizing to create a ton of code for over 15 years. It could be challenging to switch from that program to a rival's platform. During its June shareholders meeting, NVIDIA said that 3,700 GPU accelerated apps, utilized by over 5 million developers across approximately 40,000 companies, are supported by QDA, which now has over 300 code libraries and 600 AI models. Numerous businesses have banded together to challenge NVIDIA due to the market's immense size for AI computing. Analyst Atif Malik of City Research, who specializes in semiconductors and networking equipment, predicts that by 2027, the market for chips related to artificial intelligence would grow to $400 billion. About $61 billion was earned by NVIDIA during the fiscal year that concluded in January. According to Bill Pearson, an Intel vice president focusing on AI for cloud computing customers, a large portion of this collaboration is centered on creating open source alternatives to QDA. Two of these projects involve Intel engineers. ARM, Google, Samsung, and Qualcomm are involved in one. The business that created ChatGPT, OpenAI, is currently engaged in an open source project. Startups trying to create QDA substitutes are receiving a flood of investment capital. The potential for engineers at some of the largest AT companies in the world to work together to allow businesses to use any chips they choose and avoid paying what some in the industry refer to as the QDA tax is one of the factors driving those investments. 
Groke, a business that stands to benefit greatly from all of this open source software, recently revealed plans to raise $640 million at a $2.8 billion valuation in order to develop processors that rival NVIDIA's. So what does this really mean for NVIDIA stock? Let's find out. But first, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make. So if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow that said back to the video. A remains worth watching segment for global investors in 2024. But how do you keep up with the AI sector and others that you may be interested in? I recommend trying Moomoo, a sponsor of today's video. Some features to discover stocks with investment potential has blown me away. You can use the industry chain to find companies throughout the entire AI sector or use the stock screener to filter stocks according to your investment strategy. Having the option to set parameters like industry, market indicators, financial indicators, technical indicators, and more. Ultimately, discover potentially undervalued stocks and those that appear to show buy signals to help inform your strategies in an effort to capitalize on ad-related opportunities. At the same time, Moomoo is one of the cheapest trading platforms I've found. It offers zero commission on stocks, options, and EDS. After comparisons, I've discovered the fees are among the lowest. Right now, new users who open an account using my link and make a qualified deposit can get up to 15 free stocks. Enjoy a limited time 8.1% APY on idle cash for three months and earn up to $300 cash reward for transferring in their portfolio. These rewards can be earned together, so don't miss out. And thanks again to Moomoo for sponsoring this portion of the video. So I plan to, when the stock settles, and or we get through their report on August 28th, you know what, I'll probably buy some more. Well, I'm curious because because you mentioned NVIDIA a lot, we all do, right? Just because it's so dominant within this space. We did see a lot to like in AMD's report. When, when we look at that roadmap ahead, is there an opportunity for AMD, for some of these other chip makers to close that leadership gap that we have seen for so long from NVIDIA? You know, I think that they may close the leadership gap a bit, but not significantly. I mean, take a look at uh, AMD. Yes, when they reported the other day, they uh, moved their guidance from $4 billion in AI chips this year to four and a half. And the prior quarter, they went from three and a half to four, but it's still gonna be a sliver, an absolute sliver of what Nvidia is going to do. So over time, the pie will get bigger. I still think that, uh, NVIDIA will have most of the slices and AMD. Hey, it's a strong, well-managed company under Dr. Lisa Su. They'll be a good second supplier. But NVIDIA will have a hold on this market for as far as the... Giants in the tech industry are also investing in NVIDIA chip substitutes. Microsoft declared in 2023 that it will follow suit with Amazon and Google producing their own unique processors for implementing and developing artificial intelligence. AMD is one of NVIDIA's most effective rivals in the AI chip market. Although AMD's expected $4.5 billion in revenue from its Instinct line of AI chips in 2024 is still a small portion of NVIDIA's market share. The company is making significant investments to attract software engineers, according to Vice President Andrew Diekman of AMD. We have significantly increased our software resources, he claims. AMD said last month that it would pay $665 million to acquire Silo AI, bringing on 300 more AI engineers. Significant NVIDIA users Meta Platforms and Microsoft both purchase AMD's AI chips, demonstrating a desire to promote competition for one of the most expensive products in the budgets of both industry titans. However, for the next two to three years, Malik of City Research predicts that NVIDIA will continue to hold a 90% market share in chips connected to artificial intelligence. Understanding the steps involved in creating an AI similar to ChatGPT without utilizing any NVIDIA hardware or software will help weigh the benefits and drawbacks of other options. If he couldn't have afforded it, NVIDIA's hardware and software would have been the first things Babak Palavan, the CEO of the startup Ninja Tech AI, used to create his company. However, NVIDIA's potent H100 chips are in short supply, which has kept costs high and accessibility difficult.
Eventually, Pollavan and his fellow founders turn to Amazon, which creates its own unique chips for artificial intelligence, AI, training, the process by which these systems learn from enormous amounts of data. The team eventually trained their AI using Amazon's chips, called Trainium. After months of work, it was not simple. According to Pollavan, there were numerous difficulties and glitches. For several months, their Ninja Tech AI team convened four times a week with the Amazon software team. After the two businesses resolved their differences, Ninja Tech's AI agents, which carry out tasks on behalf of users, debuted in May. The service is reportedly used by over a million people each month, all of whom are supplied by models that have been trained and optimized using Amazon's chips. The story of Ninja Tech AI highlights a significant factor that is causing similar firms to suffer and need more time to develop AI outside of NVIDIA's walled garden, cost. According to Pollavan, Ninja Tech pays Amazon over $250,000 a month for cloud services in order to support over a million users. He says it would be between $750,000 and $1.2 million if he were using NVIDIA chips to run the same AI. NVIDIA is well aware of the intense competition it faces as well as the high cost of operating and purchasing its processors. Huang, the CEO of the business, has promised to lower the cost of AI training on the company's hardware with its upcoming line of AI-focused chips. With all of these considerations, NVIDIA is unquestionably a great buy, especially if you're looking to invest for the long term because the company hasn't reached its full potential yet. What do you think about NVIDIA stock? Is it a good buy at the current price? Please share your opinions with us in the comments section and don't forget to let us know what you think NVIDIA is worth. If you're interested in learning what other companies like NVIDIA have been up to lately, click on the next video on your screen. We'll see you there.